Good morning, folks. Richard Jean, the fishing machine here. This morning, I'm going to show you an easy way to catch loads of crappie from the bank for dinner. So, let's start right here by talking about our setup, what we're going to be fishing with. This is a 9 foot 3 Sam's Super Sensitive Jig Pole. One of the best jig poles I've ever had in my hands, folks. It's um, approximately nine foot four, two piece rod, light as a feather. And usually what I'll do is complement it with a 1,000 size reel, like this one. And four pound test line. High vis mono is what I like. Not, it don't matter about the brand. Mr. Crappie is a good line but there's others on the market. Um, but the main thing in a jig pole, what you're looking for, is to find one as light as you possibly can find one, okay? Because you're fishing from the bank and holding the rod out like this, jigging, oftentimes can tire your arm out. So what I do is take the butt of the rod and stick up under my forearm and there's absolutely no pressure at all. I can fish like this all day long if I have to. Now, the reason why I like a jig pole from the bank, uh, especially on rip route, where I'm walking down the rip route, is because crappie are notorious for laying eggs or for making nests in between rocks that slid out into the water two, three, four feet deep. Um, they'll make nests between those rocks if it's a sandy bank. That's what you gotta look for, pea gravel or sand. Either, either way it works. But crappie feel safe, I believe, instinct, instinctively that, they're, that they have a nest in between two rocks. That's honestly what I believe. So that's what I'm looking for. Water depth on rip routes, it's anywhere from three to four feet deep. That's the first thing. Uh, water clarity is very important. Usually here on the Tennessee River, they're not going to bed any deeper than three or four feet deep most years. The reason why is because the sunlight has to penetrate down onto the nest, onto the eggs that they've laid, just right to be able to incubate and for those eggs to hatch, okay? So, usually when I fish like this, I'm fishing with a small jig, a real small, light jig. That way I can keep this offering over the top of the fish for a long, long time. Let's get it in here just right. I'm being a little bit distracted. There's some noise right over there. But that's a 1.75 slab tail. It don't matter what kind of jig you use, whatever that you're comfortable with using. But I would recommend a small one. Nothing over two inches. Okay, that's a 132nd of an ounce jig head with a size six hook in it. And if you notice, it's tied with a loop knot. A loop knot is very important, especially when it comes to vertical jigging. And the reason why is you can see how that that jig is at an angle right now. Well, that loop knot is loose from the eyelet. You can see when you put that down into the water, the buoyancy of this plastic will make this jig rise up level like that, just like a minor swims. Just like that, because the, the, the loop knot is loose from the eyelet. Now, if you tie it direct to the line, with a light jig head like this, and if the knot is cinched at an angle instead of directly in the middle like that, it's going to hang at an odd angle. And that, I'm not saying you won't get bit that way because you definitely will, but I feel like a loop knot gives me a few more bites. In fact, I know it does it, yeah, throughout the course of the day. All right, folks, let's start it off right here. I hadn't caught a fish with this jig pole in a while. And, like I said, this is one of my favorite methods uh, 
to catch crappie. It's a lot of fun, especially with this limber pole. But I'm going to start right here and work up the bank, around the bank like that. Right here, these slab tail baits right here is a great, great, great presentation for crappie. Um, fishing like this vertically if you can see there they have a unique tail action if you can see that it's a seesaw type action especially when you have a loop knot that loop knot is the deal this is a nine foot four pole right here and really that's about perfect for me fishing like this I'm fishing out plenty far enough because these fish are right at the base of these rocks. These fish have moved in right down through here and they're spawning. There's one right there. Y'all see that pole bending? That's what's fun about this. That's a big one too. We're going to put him in the bucket. So they are still here. Now what I like about a jig pole is just this right here. You can let him wear out by, look at there what a fish. By using your pole, I don't like to horse the fish. To me that's not sporty, I want to fight him. If he gets off, well then he gets off. We'll just catch another one folks. If he gets off, he done it in a fair way. But that one right there seems to be caught. That size six hook and that jig held him. Held him good. I don't really like using a size eight in a jig pole. Uh, we'll just lift him on up. He's hooked good. That's a good, hey, 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 hey. That's a good fish right there. Look at there. What a big black crappie. That's what we're talking about. And he eat that. And that's a great place right there to hook him. That's where you want to hook a crappie. That's the toughest part of his mouth. And a straight up hook set will do that most every time. Not all the time, but most every time. All right, let's put a little water in this bucket. But there he is, big old black crappie. That's going to make some good fillets. Let's see if we can do that again. Now this is a great, great color right here, especially in springtime. I do well with any, any jig that has a little red and sharp trues. This is the uh, 1.75 Super Slab Tail. The name of it is Red Ugly Green Tail. Red slash ugly green tail. I tell you what, it's a good color when they're on bed. Now it takes very little action, folks, to get the strike. When you're talking about crappie in a jig pole, the rod's so long just by the jig moving and you twitching it, that rod tip just like that, just a little bit. That's all it takes for the, the strike. That's the best. Wrong species, but it don't make any difference. <laughs> That's a lot of fun. Y'all see him, he ain't very big, but he feels big on this jig pole. All right, you're done, you're done. You'll catch a little bit of everything doing this, walking up and down these rip wraps. Little large mouth, go on back. Oh my goodness, y'all see that? Are y'all seeing it? Now that's a good one right there. I'm just gonna let him wear out. He's too big to try to horse. These are big black crappie. Trying his best to shake that jig. Okay. Let's ease down here and see if we can get him. Come on.
Come on, boy. You're caught. Okay. <laughs> Look at there. That one's going in the bucket, too. Whew. Probably about a, I don't know, 12-inch crappie. I think the first one's a little bit bigger. But they're just good flaying size. Right there. Perfect flaying size. You know, fishing from the bank offers a lot of different advantages. For, for one, you can really control your bait a lot better from the bank, which I've mentioned, than you can from a boat. I mean, these fish don't even know I'm here, so I'm not spooking any fish. And all I'm doing is, okay, let, let, let's get it right here. See, I know how deep they are. I'm letting that bait fall about four, four and a half feet. Okay. I'm a couple feet from the bottom, maybe a foot and a half from the bottom. I'm throwing my rod at an angle, letting that jig follow. And then twitching that rod tip just a little bit, making that jig have a seesaw type action. That's all it takes. Just the movement alone like that is usually all it takes. But every once in a while, you can bump that jig like that, and it'll make it seesaw. You see? And that's all you need to do. And I can do this all day long and not get tired because I put the, the butt of the rod up under my forearm like that. And as light as this is, <laughs> this is the lightest rod I've ever had in my hand. It's an old rod, but it's light as a feather. Sometimes changing angles a little bit, go ahead and you go ahead and make them bite. Y'all, excuse me, I'm focusing. I didn't hook him, I just plum missed him. Plain out missed him. Oh, that's why. That's why we missed him. Usually, when a crappie commits, you got him. You will at least hook him. That's a little. Little yellow bass. That ain't what we're after. All right. Got him out of the way. I don't know what. There's a crappie. <laughs> I was fixing to say, we got him out of the way. Now we'll probably catch a crappie. <sighs> Boy, that one's fighting. Yep. That one's fighting. And I tell you, y'all see those fish that was behind him? Those wasn't crappie. Those were gizzard shad. And why they was following him, I don't know, but they'll do it this time of year. They'll do it. I've had that happen a lot of times. There's about six big gizzard shad just right for catfishing following that crappie right there and my bucket's way over yonder wait that's okay I'm gonna have to get my pliers and hope to him folks but you know this is I get a lot of comments about that bank fishing you know about how to locate them in the springtime they don't always bed in the same places a lot of times they do, but not always. I just get out here and walk, and I hunt them. I hunt these fish. And once you get you a little pattern going, well, you can have some, a ball out here. But the thing about bedding crappie is that uh, you have a small, it's not really a big wind of opportunity. Not really. Let's bring the bucket on with us. Uh, this is good exercise too. One needs to be out here exercising when you're old. Or if you're young, it don't make any difference. Whoa. Doggone it. Hey man. Whoa. I'm t hey, let's catch another one.
May the force be with you, Luke Fish Stalker! There's another one. Golly! Now this is a good one right here. Oh, let me read. Just my drag a little bit. I don't want him to tear off. This is good fish. I can't tell y'all how that fish is fighting. Well, y'all can see it. See all them gizzard shad behind him? Boy, this is good fish right here. This is slab, daddy. That's a slab, daddy. Come on in here. Golly. What's a big, pretty flays? Big, pretty flays. That's about a 14-inch fish right there or better. I knew it was a better fish when I stuck him. Let's put him right there. See, he takes up the whole bottom of the bucket. Tell you what, folks, this is a lot of fun. And to me, to me, it's a lot funner from the bank. Is that a word? Funner than it is from, from a boat. When you're on a pattern like this, now you can absolutely have a ball out here. Just watch for snakes, because I done seen the snakes is coming out a little bit. Now, let me, let me, uh, let me go ahead and add this real quick. I'm going to move up just a little bit, folks. I've wore out my welcome right there just a little bit. Let me add this real quick. Now, these fish are just biting four feet. But when it comes to crappie, the slower you can fish, the better off you'll be. See, there's another one right there. That's a good one. That's a darn good one right there. And there's those gizzard shad. That's a good fish. Golly, bum. The slower you can fish, the better. You'll definitely catch more crappie. You're not out here to set records, but you can set records if you'll slow down when it comes to crappie fishing. Look here. If you're a record setter, I'm not. I'm out here to enjoy the sport of fishing and every once in a while keep some. I don't keep that many fish just at times. When Sue Bob wants them, I do. Look at there. Ain't that beautiful? What's fun about this is when I hook them and then, then I see the crappie for the first time. See that big black silhouette come up towards the top of the water. That's what's, that's what's, uh, you get back in there. That's what's cool. That's what's fun. Quit. It just, it's a thrill to me. And it's no different than when I, I haven't changed since I was a kid as far as getting excited. I've never lost that feeling. Matter of fact, I think I appreciate it much more now that I'm older. Older than what, you know, I appreciate things a lot more. There's one, golly, that's another big one. Now y'all can see, that sun is really out. Y'all look at that. Now, that fish is fighting extra hard because those gizzard shad are behind him, spooking him. So he's going to wear out pretty quick doing that. He don't understand that. What are y'all doing in behind me like that? You pest? Get out of here. See, he give out quick because of that. He was fighting for everything he had. Okay. Come on in here, boy. I think it's time for me to put these five on ice. I'm not going to keep a whole lot of them, I don't think. I don't know. It just depends. Fish last a long time at the house. I don't eat them that much. Not like Mama Sue does. One, two, three, four. Four, five, or six. And I got big ones. Quit. Yeah, let's put them on ice. Now these baits right here, you'll catch more fish. In my opinion, I've fished them uh, both ways. 
but if you'll keep the if you'll rig it up where the tail is flat like that it'll have a better seesaw action that's just me but i wish this wind would calm down just a little bit folks it's making it a little bit hard but, but i tell you that's okay with a jig pole you still have a lot of control This should be a crappie right there now. Water's getting a little bit deeper right here, but still, it's not too deep. We got a few bluegill right here. I've went about a old hundred feet without even getting a bite, and that's typical. You just gotta hunt these fish up. They're not going to be just solid all the way down through here. I guarantee you that. They're just going to be in places and spots. And they could be only one spot down a long rip route that's holding fish. One little area. Then they could be two or three areas that's holding. You never know. Golly, them bluegill are eating it up right here. I know that. They're small. They're, they're about as half as big as my hand. There we go. We may have found some more. That's a good fish right there. I didn't feel the bite. I'm a lion watcher. <laughs> There's a bunch of gizzard shad up under him. Them gizzard shad is all the way up through here. Okay. Golly, I'm in a bad place right here. Maybe we can land him. If he's hooked good enough, we will. Okay. Yep, that's a good one. Another good one. I went a long ways without getting a bite. And that's what you gotta do to find these places. You can't fish too quick. If you do, You'll fish over these fish because crappie's not going to do a hundred yard dash, folks, for a bait. They just ain't going to do it. But yeah, I didn't even feel that bite. I'm a lion watcher. I've seen that high vis line go when it's windy like that. This that's another reason why high vis line will pay off. Well, folks, I got a lot of fish cleaning to be done. There's probably over 20, 20 crappie there on ice. Well, folks, that's going to be probably one of the most effective techniques that I know from the bank. Um, there's a couple different other ways I like to fish. Y'all have seen it, but basically when it comes to jig fishing, you have a lot of control with a jig pole. In fact, it's probably my number one way to catch crappie most of the time. The second best way would be with ultra light tackle. Two pound test line and small jigs. That's, a, that's probably my second best. But they're both fun. They're both productive. I want to say God bless each and every one of y'all. Thank y'all for all the great comments. Everything y'all have done for this channel is greatly appreciated. <laughs> hey, boo. This rock. See this rock? And remember, go fish him when you can, but call this good for you. May the force be with you, Luke Fish Stoker.